Hi Church, Pastor Jeff here with another Trinity Check-In, and today I want to talk about a very particular type of prayer. So Sunday in church at both services, um, when the time came for the prayer, I realized that we hadn't done silent prayer in worship for a while. You know, during Lent, we used a prayer of confession, which is a very good thing to do, but that, that that's like the slot where I normally might have done silent prayer, right? And so we did it, and I realized uh, uh, kind of as we were praying in silence that I didn't talk about it very much, about uh, about silent prayer, or about what happens there, or about some of the uh, some of the um, oh let's say misconceptions that can happen around it, uh, and I wanted to say more about that because I firmly believe that silent prayer is is one of the deepest kinds of prayer. Uh, strange uh, as that might seem, if it's not something that you're used to. Okay, so normally we think of prayer as making a request of God or talking to God or having a conversation, and it certainly is that. Uh, that is a very good and valid kind of prayer too. But sometimes we don't. Have have words. <laughs> and you know, inspired by scriptures like um, uh, where it says that uh, uh, sometimes that the Holy Spirit prays through us, that Jesus prays through us. Um, sometimes we realize that the silent prayer, where we just allow things to be still and simply be, can be the closest and best relationship that we can have with God, uh, or, or at least a, a major component of it. Anybody who's been uh, in, a, in a long-term relationship, whether it be marriage, or friendship or whatever knows that uh, when you're when you're first starting out those lulls in conversations are terribly awkward but there comes a point where you're comfortable being silent with one another and why should that be any different with God Here's the thing, though. When we try to spend time in silence with God, all of us have our minds just absolutely race. Everything goes through our mind all at once. And um, we could talk more about what's probably going on there. It's the same thing that's discovered in meditation, if any of you have explored that. Uh, uh, Buddhists are especially uh, especially adept at talking about this kind of thing. In fact, I've learned a lot from, uh, from Buddhists uh, about how to be silent. But uh, everybody's mind races. And, and at first, it's tempting to beat yourself up over that, to feel bad about it. Like, ah, I can't even manage to be quiet for a few minutes. How messed up am I that my mind races? Well, on the one side, um, uh, on the one side, don't be so hard on yourself. On the other side, well, yeah, you are kind of messed up. We all are. And that's exactly why we're doing this. It's just that being silent makes us confront how busy our minds always are but we confront it in an atmosphere of grace and of acceptance that comes from God. And as you sit, as you try to take the thought that runs through your mind and set it aside, oh, there's another thought, take it and set it aside. Oh, another thought, okay, we'll set it aside. <laughs> in between those thoughts, there starts to emerge brief little moments of silence of something that's pure and good and holy. Not that your thoughts aren't worth having, this just isn't the moment for them. And when you manage to set them aside successfully, you find that you meet God in those moments in a deep and profound way. Uh, and in fact, it's that moment when you realize you're thinking again. It's that moment when you turn back to the silence. That's when that happens. And it is a profound and a wonderful and a special thing. So if any of you are not used to praying in silence, or if you've never tried it before except in worship, I would really encourage you to do it because it's also kind of like a muscle. Um, people in the meditation say something similar that you learn. You train your brain uh, to be in that, uh, in that state of silence and of acceptance. And when you do, you start to notice more. You know, maybe you're pausing between tasks. Maybe you walk by a window and you just stand for a moment. And in those moments of silence, well, you encounter something that's similar. And you start to realize that it's not just, silent pr it's not just silence in prayer that causes that to happen, but that God is always there in the silence of daily life, in the silence of everything that happens around us, that whenever we still ourselves, the holy, the divine is there, and it becomes something truly remarkable. 
So there you go. I'm not the best person to talk about this. If I've piqued anybody's interest, I would recommend you go online and search for Centering Prayer. That's a particular name for it, and there's much more that can be said. If you really want to know more, go on YouTube or, 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 or look for books by Thomas Keating, Father Thomas Keating, a, a, a monk uh, who has a, a, a written and spoke so wonderfully about this kind of silent prayer over the years. Uh, and I guarantee it it will deepen your journey. may not always be an easy road. Silence is strange like that, but I guarantee that it will, uh, that, that it will enhance everything in your life when you learn to do it. <laughs> All right. Now, this Sunday in church, not silent. Well, we might pray in silence for a little while. However, the Sermon Sunday, I have two clips from children's television in the 80s and 90s. One clip from the 80s and one clip from the 90s to help make my point. So especially if you grew up in those areas, you are wa going to want to come and see that. Uh, also, uh, perhaps an even better reason to come this Sunday, arguably, it's brunch Sunday. Uh, we have have some uh, um, um, uh, Amy and Sophie in our office made the plan. We've got some volunteers coming in and they're making breakfast burritos. I am already looking forward to that. You say the word breakfast burrito and I'm there. I don't care if it's lunch or dinner time. So it will be a good brunch Sunday too. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you find some moments of silence and I hope you let me know how it goes for you too because uh, it's always good conversations. We'll see you soon, church.